We're still in snow. Yeah, we are. Let's, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. We're going back to L.A. That's right. Back to Griffith Park and the L.A. Live Steamers uh, <laughs> to pick up where we left off with that. This time we're actually going to ride the trains around and get into the back shops and That's see a big all the fun, interesting and wonderful, fun stuff they have at no kidding. L.A. Live Steamers. Quite the railroad, mm -hmm. the L.A. Live Steamers. Check right. it out. So we're back at the L.A. Live Steamers to go for a ride. <laughs> oh, well, let's get on there right now. I'm anxious. <laughs> They're open on the weekends. There's people around all the time. This was actually the first time I'd ever been there when they were open for business. Yeah, no kidding. But the, the club members are around here all the time, but they only give rides, sell rides, whatever, on the weekends. This is just fun to come out here and see the people ride the trains and the looks on their face of pure enjoyment. Well, and typically of Los Angeles, there's a ton of people here. Oh, no kidding. You know, uh, this club is not that big in terms of its physical footprint. They don't have that much dirt, but they do have a lot of members and just so many members of the public come out to ride and play on the trains. It's just packed with equipment and people in a relatively small space. Over here, they'll do stationary engines when they're having a meet. That's always fun. Sure. And this kind of interesting facility, uh, they weren't using it, but I was just curious what it is. But when it comes to facilities, these guys really have a lot of facilities. They got track on every square inch of dirt. They got signaling all the way around the main lines. Even this old ball signal, which <laughs> struck me as really fun. And these very realistic switch stands. All of the switches are thrown by regular switch stands, which is really fun. And structures. I really like this elevated crossing chanty That here. is just neat. It's, uh, it's kind of about, I don't know, half scale. They haven't followed any particular scale. This is uh, a 1 12th scale sand tower. It looks very much like Chama. But Alex here built this really neat 12th scale sand tower. How cool is That's that? That's nice. And I think it is Chama. It looks like Chama. It sure does. They have a ton of members, and it seems they'll just let people go ahead and build structures if they <laughs> feel so inclined. <laughs> And they've built this really cool 12th scale locomotive shop over here, roundhouse and turntable. How cool is that? Well, it is, it's just awesome. And then guys can actually keep their equipment in the roundhouse if that's what they want to do. I suppose it's reasonably secure. We're behind very tall fences oh, here. But look at that beautiful engine that just lives in this little roundhouse here. That's awesome. It's just really, really, really cool. <laughs> and speaking of structures, this is the Disney barn. Oh, yes. Walt Disney built this on his uh, backyard railroad way back in the early 1950s. And the Carrollwood Society moved it here to the LA Live Steamers, and they've got uh, various Disney displays and a model railroad and so on. We did uh, the entire show last Sunday on the Walt Disney connection, but he was a member here. What is this steampunk looking thing? You know, we asked around and nobody knows. <laughs> But as part of this engine facility right here, they've got, I think, three of these turntables or two of these turntables, something like that, uh, in the smaller gauge, in the four and three quarter inch gauge. And over here, they've got this extensive seven and a half inch gauge engine facility with a transfer table and all of this storage facility for people's locomotives. And when it comes to equipment, they are not wanting or hurting for equipment with so many members and everybody has their own equipment there's just trains everywhere you look <laughs> <laughs> now normally they don't let people uh, wander around the facility you can come in here and ride the trains mm -hmm. but they were very nice 
they let, uh, well, two different guys helped us wander around. We had guides, and mm -hmm. they took us around the entire facility, and that was really cool. That was. A very, very nice people here. But we started off our day by actually riding the train. Yes. <laughs> and that was a hoot. There's Disney's barn. This is fun. This is one of those little 12th scale trains. One of the ones I wish I had. Isn't that thing beautiful? That's fun. You know, they put on a big party here for Halloween. They oh. do, I don't know, a ghost train or something oh, like that. Oh, my favorite holiday, really. Yeah, me too. We should come down here for that. Let's do that. Maybe this upcoming Halloween or the yeah. Halloween after that or something like that. Hey, my birthday's right close to then, so but let's plan. It's legendary. It Their is. Halloween decorations are just legendary. That'd be a hot blast. Oh, Park. look at this. It's Jurassic Park. Yeah, I don't know. Some uh, some dinosaurs on the loose. Oh, over here. dear. But I'm a little more intrigued by the full-size equipment over there. Uh, the next-door neighbor is Travel Town. Oh. And that's actually next Sunday's show. Yes. Is Travel Town. But what an interesting neighbor to have just on the other side of the fence here. <laughs> Surprisingly, I was here when they were building this bridge, which was in the 1970s. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it was at one of those times that I was living in L.A., and I was kind of considering joining their club. And I came over here to talk to them, and they were working diligently on that bridge. Well, how fun. They only give rides on the seven and a half inch gauge, which is necessary because the smaller trains are just too small to allow the public to ride on. The individual members can play with their own little trains, but these little trains like this, the 12th scale, are really just for the individual members to play with, and they're not, uh, they're not giving rides to the public on those. Mm -hmm. 
A lot of the members do have these smaller trains. They're four and three quarter inch gauge, one twelfth scale. But uh, this is one of the few live steam railroads that has that gauge for these guys to run on. But boy, do they have a lot of members that, that run on this size train. Now look at this cute little guy coming along. That's darling. Look how teeny that engine ah, is. Ah, and he's having fun with that. No kidding. It's, and his locomotive is about the size of a shoebox, but it can neatly just pull him along and at a pretty good clip. So they've actually got four different gauges here. They've got the usual seven and a half inch gauge that most of the clubs have, the four and three quarter that we've been looking at, and the inner loop is in a dual gauge, four and three quarter and three inch. And they've also got garden railroading in two different locations on a number one gauge. Wow. So lots of different possibilities for running here at the LA Live Steamers. Oh, look at all the smiles on these people's faces. These events just bring out the best in everyone. Doesn't it? Nothing like a train ride. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Funnest thing you can do. Now this is really interesting. While everybody's running the same gauges, they're not necessarily running the same scales. And this one's based on a two-foot prototype, so it's just positively huge. And, as uh, we mentioned before, they've got two different garden railroads here. This one's built at ground level, and that's really cool because you can do some fun things when you're building right at ground level. You can do things with scenery and, and structures and vegetation and stuff that you couldn't do on an elevated railroad. But the other railroad I'm finding more and more and more attractive. Yes, me too. <laughs> because it's up on bench work. Yes, easy to get to. Easy to get to. And when you're back and your knees and you hit a certain age and this sort of thing gets uh, a lot more attractive. And they've got the neatest system here for elevating it. You can loosen these screws and then move the whole bench work up and down. Because when you're working outside, things have a way of shifting and moving around. Right. Ron here was showing us how this particular railroad works. Now over at the steam bays, we ran into this guy with this nifty little tiny steam engine. It's a four and three quarter inch gauge and he was just getting up ahead of steam, ready to go out onto the track. Look at that, how he shovels a little shovel full of coal into the fire. That is neat. Yeah, these things work just like a full-size steam engine. They're just, well, they're not full-size. They're not even close. But if you're doing live steam, you got to be prepared to spend an enormous amount of time just screwing around with the engine in the steam bays. It takes a long time to get one of these things ready to go out. That's because they are exactly like a full-size steam engine. It just takes a long time to get up ahead of steam and hit the main line. And Alex took us over to this little area here where they've got this massive streamlined oh, diesel here. Look at that thing. Oh my heck. That's, that's huge. That's wow. Just, and beautiful paint mm -hmm. job, beautiful everything. And then they took us into the storage building. A lot of the members keep their equipment in here on three different tiers and they just have the equipment all stacked up inside here. It's all ready to go out. This isn't some sort of permanent storage. It's just massive storage for all the equipment that belongs to the members because they have so many members with so much equipment. Some of it's narrow gauge like this, some of it's standard gauge. So all different sizes, shapes, configurations, you name it. They have it. They have it, it's in here. If you look closely, these passenger cars actually have seats inside them. 
you can actually ride in these passenger cars. How cool is that? And look at the size of this huge little Union Pacific train. Large little. <laughs> Large little. It's, <laughs> boy, I love it though. We were both pretty uh, pretty enthralled with this. We were both oh. shooting up a lot of video on this one. No kidding. But what a beautiful, beautiful model. Most of these models were just built by the members, all hand machined in their own machine shops from available castings. But uh, what a hobby to build your own steam engine in your own machine shop and then bring it here and run it. Oh, look, it's a Rio Grande Southern Goose. Yeah, Goose 6. Oh, my. From the Colorado Railroad Museum in yeah. Golden. We got to screw around with that we last did. time we were there. That was really fun. But they've got a lot of equipment here in three foot gauge, like these logging disconnects yeah. here are three foot gauge. So they'll only work if the logs are in place because they're disconnect hey. cars. And this stuff is loaded down to the main line on this triple level transfer table. Oh, wow. That's cool. But everywhere you look, there's all kinds of different equipment because boy, these guys have just examples of everything. Coming here is like going to a model show. It or is. Just everywhere you look, there's going to be something interesting. Look at these electric locomotives, steeple cabs off the ATNSF, the Santa Fe. They've got pantographs on here so that they could pick up power from overhead wires, but of course there are no overhead wires here. They run on batteries, but they're all set up with the pantographs so that they look correct. They're nice, beautiful scale models, and then they run on battery power. But that's just gorgeous. What beautiful modeling. Wow. Big dog. That is a monster. These things are just positively huge. Now, the diesel engines typically have gas engines in them, so they run on a small gasoline engine, not on batteries like the other engines. And they invited us to have lunch with them. <laughs> that was nice. That was very friendly. They've got this whole kitchen, so how fun is that? Well, it's easy to see why the LA Live Steamers is regarded as one of America's best live steam clubs. What a setup. And what nice guys. Well, that's the LA Live Steamers. Isn't that fun? What a cool place. I mean, mm. as live steam railroads go, that's not one of the biggest ones and this, no. that, and the other. But the thing is, it's probably the best known. Right. Just because it's it's Hollywood, it's LA. It's, it's LA, it's, it's yeah. It's right there, you know, that far from Universal Studios and right across from Warner Brothers Studios and just down from Disney Studios. And, and it doesn't have snow. And it doesn't have snow. Right. Which is, you know, the biggest plus factor in exactly. the whole thing. Exactly. And it's just a really, really, really nice uh, railroad. It is. And interestingly, they have all those different gauges. Yeah. Um, that's just so interesting. Almost all the live steam railroads that you run into are seven and a half inch gauge. Mm -hmm. But uh, there in LA, they've got all kinds of different gauges yeah. running around. So. Uh, and I was really surprised to see how many people are running the, the smaller gauges. I know. There were more people running the smaller gauges than seven and a half inch gauge. Right. So I guess it makes <laughs> sense that they would have all that track. Right. Or maybe they have all those members because they have all that track. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> One feeds off the other. That's true. Anyway, there's the LA Live Steamers. We're actually coming back here again. Yes. But this time to look at their next door neighbor, which is Travel Town. Oh. And Travel Town's really, really, really cool. It's a railroad museum, mm -hmm. and some people think it's part of the LA Live Steamers, or the LA Live Steamers are part of them. They just happen to share a fence. Uh, they're not connected in any other way. Okay. But it's really neat, so check that out. The uh, Travel Town, also at Griffith Park. <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. I just, I missed a whole zoink. <laughs> You want to turn around and go back and hit let's, it? Let's turn around. <laughs> it's back there laying in the road. It is. I it's following us now. <laughs> okay. If you're, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And the interesting and fun way to subscribe is with the blue button. 
Are you are you cracking up over them? Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there it is. Blue butt. <laughs> Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here again in uh, a few days with the Tuesday show. We'll see you then. See you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>